Nice. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler along with Gary Danielson. We welcome you to a picture perfect day in Iowa City. You know, Gary, when the season started back in August, Ohio State, every time they broke a huddle, they said national champs. <laughs> they had to change their chant a little bit last week. Now it's just hard work, and I guess that's what it'll take with what went on a week ago with what happened just a few minutes ago at Michigan. What are they thinking coming into this game? I think they're thinking, boy, am I glad I can play a football <laughs> game. Hayden Fry has seen it all for 30 years, like you said. He's gone back to dust off all those playbooks. Every bit of trickery and gadgets that he has will be tried today by this Iowa team as they try to get some big plays and move the ball against that Ohio State defense. One of the dimensions that Scott Mullins gives this football team that people used to watching Ohio State football, I mean, Iowa football is not used to, is a running quarterback. Good size, but also the best runner out of the three quarterbacks that have played for Iowa this year. Iowa has been tested with injuries at quarterback, and that, right as of now, Scott Mullen is the guy that gives them the best chance running the option and the strongest arm of the three guys. It's led by Jared DeVries. He's been one of the best they've ever had in this city. Kramer, Klein, Heron, and Lofton round out the 52. The linebacker, Matt Hughes, missed the Purdue game a couple of weeks ago. Healthy now after the extra week. Campman joins him in the linebacking core. Eric Thigpen is the heart and soul of their secondary with Slattery Bowen and Tarek Holman. So. Jared DeVries came to Iowa as a 218-pound freshman. He's grown a little bit. <laughs> 284 now. And he'll pin his ears back here as Jermaine, you would expect to throw on third and 11. And here it comes. The out. Up by DJ Johnson. He's got a convoy and a sideline. DJ Johnson inside the 30. Still on his feet. Cuts back. He's up on the yard line. Out route to the outside. Ball is thrown on good timing. But when you play zone defense, you know you got guys behind you to help you. D. Miller was the attended receiver, and I really thought that D.J. Johnson was going to take this one the whole way. Travis Centers made a nice block, but it was Michael Wiley who came back number five to make the touchdown saving tackle. On the keeper, Mullen got a blocker in front. Touchdown. You called the block. The key block was from the fullback right here, fitting on the safety right there. That's what opens up the play. Come down on the option. Ohio State is blitzing. Katzenmoyer gets blocked right there by the tight end. And then there's the big fullback to fit on the safety, Damon Moore, and it's a trot into the end zone. Zach Roberts, point after, is up and good. And the Hawkeyes with the interception by Johnson. One play later, turn it into seven. Joe Germain off to an inauspicious beginning. Gary's 0 for 3 with an interception. 0 for 3, and, and, and you wonder what Ohio State will do. I think they've turned themselves into a passing team, but they need patience and run the ball against this front of Iowa. Here's a guy that gives them a spark. Joe Montgomery, he's into the secondary. If he gets a block, he's gone. Boston got an elbow in. Down the sideline goes Montgomery. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Ohio State. 80 yards for Joe Montgomery in for one play in relief of Michael Wiley. He's about 6'2", 205, second in the Big Ten in total yardage. Of course, the MVP of two Rose Bowls ago. And talk about toughness. Remember that bleeding chin he had in that game? He's back to throw. His receiver fell down, and it's intercepted. Tarek Holman. David Boston slipped back there, and Holman was the recipient of a gift. Yeah. Great catch by Holman. You gotta wonder why that guy's on defense. <laughs> Watch Boston come down and give a little jitterbug, inside technique, and then he slips. Kind of just trips over himself there. You can see it's a perfectly thrown ball, and Holman just says, thank you very much, David. Way to duck. <laughs> First down, Iowa. And Betts, some fancy footwork, and he's out to the 30-yard line. Good run, pick up a 14. Winfield stopped him in the secondary, but Liddell Betts, the redshirt freshman from Blue Springs, Missouri, picks up the first down. That's the Kansas City High School Player of the Year, recruited by Kansas State very highly, came to Iowa with an opportunity to play following up Tavian Banks, and uh, this guy's going to be around here for a while. 
Force play fake this time. Jermaine wants a home run ball. Going deep. He's got Boston out there, and he got him inside the 10. Touchdown. Our Home Depot coaches fact. Aiden Fry, one of 16 Division I coaches with 200-plus wins, 143 victories at Iowa, a lot of All-Americans, bowl appearances, eight All-Pro NFL players in his 20th season. And, you know, we talked about the loyalty of the fans in this part of the country, Hawkeye fans. They love the Hawkeyes. They love Hayden Fry, even having his worst season right now with only three wins coming into this. Everybody I talked to since we've been here the last three days has said, you know, you can't forget what Iowa was before Coach Fry got here. And they always say that every time we come here, and uh, that's a nice little break, I guess, to have when you're having a down year. Well, and I, and I think he deserves it. I mean, this team has gone to bowl games in the past. Uh, and they will go to bowl games in the future with Hayden Fry as their coach. I mean, this is still an attractive school. They get good players. But should he lose his last two games at 3-8, and it will be the worst record ever for a Hayden Fry team. Never gone a season without at least four wins. Right now trailing by a touchdown. Mullen pulls up, wanted to throw to the right, and now scrambles back the other way. He is in a heap of trouble now. Got rid of it. It's intercepted by Ohio State, and this is going to be a touchdown. Well, they call that a moo bar, messed up beyond all recognition. <laughs> because there's another word at the for it. We start, won't go it was going to be a quick out to the right, but the receiver did not hear the play or did not hear the play or did not run the proper route. And all of a sudden, Mullen says, I got to get rid of it. Let me try to make a play. And just as he tried to throw it away, he got hit from behind. Brent Johnson made the hit. And all of a sudden, it's getting nasty. 21 to 7. It's exactly what Iowa didn't need. Well, actually, nobody needs a play like that. Mike Collins with a dream for a defensive tackle. The extra point is up and good. Mullen pump fake one way. Wanted to throw a screen back the other way, and that's probably just as well. It was incomplete. And he took a little bump back there, and now he comes up hurting. Looks like his shoulder. Yep. I think that's going to be it for Mullen. Joe Brown hit him that time. And that's going to take that and boy, he is hurting bad. It was going to be a throwback screen, sprint one way and throw it back and watch Joe Brown put the helmet right. Hey, well, I think it's going to be his left clavicle. I'm going to just say that from up here because I've had one of those. You get hit. You still have one, but you're it, talking a broken a one. A broken one. Yeah. It just kind of pops. <laughs> it pops forward. The backup quarterback, Kyle McCann. He's been he's playing got, with a bad ankle. got a bad ankle and he limped around in practice Friday also and I tell you you get hit on that shoulder and that clavicle just goes and we have seen some quarterbacks go down this year people aren't going to want to see us come no, to games that's anymore for sure Katz and Moyer a couple tackles that really kind of changed the complexion of the quarter and Scott Mullins actually was put on a stretcher type of uh, apparatus and then put on the golf cart and he never did get to his feet well, Randy Reiners was supposed to be the starting quarterback this year. He has gone through a lot. His very close, his sister passed away. He started the opener, missed four games, returned, and then for three games, and then missed the Purdue game. Kyle McCann has come in and done some good things, but he also has a bad ankle. That is not good news against a blitzing team like Ohio State. So now taking over is Kyle McCann at the controls on a second and ten. His first play is a pass, and he's got a wide-open receiver across the 40. Flemister, the tight end, and he's all the way down to the 43-yard line of Ohio State. Third down and six. Ohio State definitely a bit blitz look. Inside corners by the, by the technique by the corners. Here they come. Here's the pass, and it's complete, and it's a first down out to the 49-yard line to Khalil Hill. And that's going to be the 30th catch of the year for Khalil. Couple today, and... Already he has broken the freshman receiving record that Dane and Hughes set here for Iowa, so he's got a bright future in front of him. We just got word from the Iowa locker room that Dr. Danielson was right. It's a broken left collarbone. Clavicle, as Gary said, the technical term, and he's done for the day <laughs> and the year. And his understudy just got sacked. Quick drop. He wanted to throw a slant, and now he's in trouble again, and down he goes. And I was going to be down to their third quarterback if they don't watch out. Here's the play fake, and down goes Jermaine, and it's Jared DeVries. Man, oh, man. That guy never has his motor on idle. 
And he's made it a very tough field goal for Stoltz. A 38-yard attempt instead of what would have been a chip shot. Stoltz missed it. Boy, if Iowa could get down the length of the field and get even three points before halftime, be a huge boost to their confidence. Trailing 21-7. Pump fake. And now running for his life is McCann. And down the middle, and he got Hill. And Hill's across midfield and down to the 43-yard line of Ohio State. And remember, you want to get as many points before halftime as you can as an Ohio State opponent because they don't give up much in the second half. This could be a pass upcoming. Little trickery. Man open. Flemister, the tight end down to the 12. So we've seen a couple of option passes today, and this one goes for 23 yards and a first down. Well, let me tell you, they've not even scratched the surface of all the trickery that Hayden Fry has ready. I watched practice for an hour and a half, but I didn't see a repeat of a play, <laughs> and there was a lot of things in. You see the halfback pass. Betts this time hits Flemister. Damon Moore up playing the run. Had to turn around and make the play. Right now, John Cooper is as nervous as Arnold Schwarzenegger being pregnant, <laughs> to tell you that. Well, we'll see what we can be expecting on this play. McCann in trouble. Got away from the rush, and now he's got an open field. McCann to the end zone. Touchdown! 13 yards for McCann, who looked like he was dead in the water back in the pocket, but he got away and scored. And that's his second rushing touchdown for an Iowa quarterback today. Well, Kyle McCann, sometimes you can have a bad ankle, but in the heat of the battle, who remembers? They tried to get the ball that time to Rob Tyne, the fullback in the flat. It broke down, and the former Iowa Hawkeye basketball player takes it the length of the court and makes the gimme bunny for three. Tyne is who they tried to go to, number 31 right there, but he was flushed by Joe Brown. You see him wide open in the corner of the end zone. That would have been a touchdown. That was a trick play. Here's the second part of the trick. We say our quarterback has a bad ankle, then we let him scramble in for a touchdown. So a happy group of Hawkeyes and their fans who are all on their feet right now <laughs> as uh, halftime's only 224 away, and they're right back in it. I know Chuck Long, and Kyle McCann can run better than Chuck Long. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> a big smile on number four's face as that capped a 79-yard drive and eight plays. A little over three minutes the Hawkeyes used to get right back in the thick of this Big Ten battle. 21-14 now. Just one reception today on the sixth throne in his direction. Jermaine, time's running out in the pocket. Somehow got away. And now throws short to Keller, the fullback in the open field. Keller got a block. He's inside the 35. It's first down, Ohio State. Ohio State doesn't even bother to huddle. And the reason you do that, even when the clock is stopped, because it keeps the pressure on that defense. And they can't change up any personnel defensively. Jermaine now with time. Wide open in the end zone is Boston. Touchdown. They made it look easy, didn't they? Yep. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson back with you. It was an interesting first half, really. Iowa got the first touchdown, but then it's playmakers for Ohio State, and they showed their medal in that first half. And, you know, and it's interesting. The guy that uh, everybody in Ohio was wondering about, Andy Katzenmore, how he would react not only to the loss, but not being named as a repeat Butkus possibility. Well, he did react. He made a couple big plays in that first half, and then that kind of sparked this Ohio State football team. Late in the half, as you mentioned, that was the touchdown to David Ball. Boston and Ohio State, I thought, started out quick and then re-caught and reignited their offense late. And I, I think Andy Katzmar might have had his best half of football. Third down. Jermaine pressure. This time he won't get away. And it's Kentman, the inside linebacker, with a sack. And here Iowa trailing by two touchdowns, forcing a punt. Almost had it blocked. Off the side of his foot. It goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. D.J. Johnson, who had an interception and a 73-yard return earlier, is the guy that put all the heat on Bartholomew. Bowl is in there at the fullback spot now. Dual backfield behind McCann. Drops to throw. And drops to the ground. Katzenmoyer with a sack. Third down at 15 now. Iowa trying not to blow the opportunity here after the short punt. Here comes a blitz. McCann in trouble again. Goes down again. Rodney Bailey from his defensive end spot has a sack. 
There's got a guy's tied Joe Germain out in college football right now, but nobody better than this guy at throwing under pressure. Not only did he hang in, he tried to keep his head on a swivel to see if it was completed or not. He's back to throw again. He got nailed again as he let it go to Boston, and he made a diving catch. Oh, my goodness. At the 11-yard line. Now that is some kind of gutsy throw and one marvelous 45-yard reception for Boston. That's pretty. Wiley. And he's dropped, and the ball is loose, and Iowa's got it. Oh, boy. That takes a big play and turns it right back over to the Hawkeyes. It's Tarek Holden, his second turnover of the day, one on an interception and now a fumble recovery. Ryan Lofton is the guy, number 48, that causes the fumble. Michael Wiley tries to make a move. Ball is not there, and you can see it pop out. Holman again is the guy who gets the turnover. So again, Iowa's defense comes up with a play when they needed it. There's the hit, there's the cover. And Holman, the defensive star, at least one of them so far today for Iowa. Giving Iowa that same hope. Here comes a blitz. Down goes the quarterback for the sixth time today. Punting from the end zone. And this one should be returnable from Boston from the 49. And Boston cuts back, reverses field, throws a stiff arm, and now he'll turn it on. David Boston, his second excellent return of the day, this one to the 22-yard line, 27-yard return. He had a 40-yarder early. Two tight ends set, Wisniewski and Hauser are both in there as Ohio State loads up and goes with a play action. Jermaine just Tosses one out to Keller for the touchdown. Oh, man. <laughs> and the worst news is Joe Germain's been on a little bit of a hot streak. They're going to come with a blitz. Germain got it away, and he threw a dart to Boston in the open field. And all the way down to the 28-yard line. Gary, you called it. There he is, 37 more yards. That's what he did this week, and something Hayden Fry's known about since last spring, really. So coaching staffs had a lot on their shoulders this year and now Ohio State with another three makes it 38 to 14 here and obviously a long day at the office a long day in the booth and still a long ways to go 13 10 left in the ball game fumble picked up actually never was fumbled bobbled and now the completion to Yamini. I don't know how McCann held on to that thing I thought he was going to cough it up it's <laughs> almost like he pitched it to himself and they got six yards out of it third down and four here's a draw play and it works going to pick up the first down out near midfield for Liddell Betts Cheatwood in on another tackle third down and 11. They shift into an eye backfield behind Kyle McCann. Play action, wanted to go down the middle. Now he's going to try to run for it. He's going to have to hustle. He might get there, though, and he does. Second excellent run of the day, and a flag at the end of that one. David Mitchell and Joe Cooper brought him down. I don't know if they got a face mask or a late hit, but you can add some more yardage to it. So fourth and 14 with a little over eight minutes left. Iowa goes for it, trailing 38 to 14. Guys, look at their chops again. Niall Diggs, it's his second sack of the day. Exactly why a lot of teams like to use the shotgun. The running that time, Liddell Betts, number 46, was assigned to the linebacker, but couldn't get there quick enough to make the block before Diggs got to the quarterback. Just inside the 10-yard line. They're going to have another touchdown. Martin. On the counter, the fullback goes nine yards for the score. Here, Ohio State rebounds from their upset loss a week ago. They win it easily. 45-14, the final. The Buckeyes roll.